Alright, uh, welcome to my video. Uh, in this video I'm going to be replacing the motherboard on a Toshiba Cosmio X70 gaming laptop because the motherboard was fried. And I'm also going to be showing you how to access and change over the um, solid state drive that goes in an M2 slot on the underside of the motherboard. And also on the, in the same area you can also replace the or add extra RAM if you ever need to. So because of the abysmal quality of the camera's onboard microphone picking up all static and nonsense, I have had to re-record everything, so this is more like commentary on my own video. Alright, so a great thing about the Cosmio X70 range, the whole back cover is only held on by one screw, and that screw also holds in the second hard drive as well. Alright, so I've done this in the wrong order, but what I'm doing right now is I'm undoing the screw that's holding in the DVD player, the DVD drive, because if you don't take that drive out, then you can't pull the back case off. That that screw will hold the case in there, and you, you'll wreck the case if you try to take it out with the drive in. All right, so now I am undoing some of the, some of the screws that are holding the case on. You should be able to see in the video all the holes there. Normally there would be these rubber stoppers or things shoved in there to hide that hide the screws. So you, you want to just shove like a whatever a pin or small screwdriver in there and just pop them out. I've actually already undone most of these just because you know it's, this is a demonstration video. I've just quickly put the laptop back together just to show you how to take it apart. So with those little tabs that go under the battery, you just want to push on them and lift and they just come straight off. It's pretty pretty simple. And even though you didn't see me taking this off the first time, it actually does come off really easy. Alright, so now with the back case removed, you're going to want to grab a anti-static wristband. And I find the best area to clip onto is the SD card slot, or the shielding or whatever it's called. Alright, now I did mention that I have taken this laptop apart before, before I did this video, but there aren't actually that many screws on the motherboard that are keeping the motherboard in the case, aside from the ones that you've already, you would have already removed to get the case off. Alright, so a good place to start here is to take out your two sticks of RAM, and just a heads up, the, the other two stick. this laptop has four sticks of RAM, or four RAM slots anyway, the other two sticks of RAM are going to be directly opposite those two, on the opposite side of the board. So yeah, a good place to start is to take the RAM out, put it in, it, put it away in an anti-static bag, and yeah, just be really careful handling it because, you know, it, it's it's sensitive to static, it's easy to, easy to um, break just by touching it the wrong way. I always grab it right by the corners. So yeah, before you can take the fan and heat sink, which are together, out, you need to undo the heatsink connection on the CPU and the GPU. And there's there should only be two screws holding the fan in, it, in itself. But also you need to make sure to unplug the fan as, as well. Alright, to take the CPU out, you need to unlock it. And to do that, you're going to need a, a star-shaped... Oh, what's it called? A star-shaped torque head... torque screwdriver. I've got a whole kit of them. If you're ever going to touch any anything with the uh, computer stuff, it's always a good idea to buy a full set of those. And yeah, as always, just 
be very careful when you're taking it out. Don't touch any of its metal parts. Even though you are grounded to the motherboard, still be careful. So there's two screws holding the GPU in. And it'll spring, just be careful, it'll spring up right after you uh, unscrew them. Now with the GPU, it once it's all the way up, just really, you got to pull on it really hard. But also, you know, wiggle it a little bit. It's in there really, really tight. You can't really see it, but I'm actually pulling very, very hard on that thing. Maybe yours, it'll come out easier. Maybe not. All right, so just want to take note in this area I'm pointing at. That's where your model number for the motherboard is. It'll be like DDAMA08B something. I don't know. But um, if you want to, when you're getting a uh, replacement motherboard, you need that number. And also, unless you're getting it from Toshiba themselves or a Toshiba certified reseller, so if you're just getting it from China or whatever, you don't really need to trust them on whether or not that you've got the right one. Just make sure that the serial number for the motherboard is exactly the same as what you are ordering. Basically, if they have pictures, make sure it's got the graphics card port and it's got the, your serial number. As long as it has those two things, it'll, it will be the right one, or it should be the right one anyway. A, lot, a bunch of times, uh, twice I had to deal with, on AliExpress, the seller, they said, no, you got the, we don't have that motherboard in. You know, th their photos were exactly of the one that I needed. And yes, yeah, so I came around again a few weeks later when they were selling the motherboards again because they kept going out of stock. And then um, I just, you know, I, I was fed up with it, you know. So I, I just said, nope, just give me the, it has that It has that number, just confirm that. And then, yep, it has the number. All right, send it to me. I don't care if it's wrong, just send, just send it to me. Whatever, I'll take responsibility. They sent it to me, that's this one. It works. It's exactly the right one. I don't think there's very many variations on the X70 motherboard, so they shouldn't vary too significantly. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's the serial number, and then there's a revision. Mine is a Rev H board. So it'll say REV double dot H. Got to make sure you got the right revision as well. All right, now here you've got some data ribbon cables for going from left to right. First one should be the mouse, the touchpad. Then the next one is the keyboard. And then the two ones on the right, one of them is for the speakers. And I don't know, I don't know the other one. Oh, and just a note, if you want to replace the keyboard for this laptop, everything has to come out. Like, you can't access it through the front. Like, the front panel does not come off. Like, on a normal laptop, it's just one solid shell for the top, and the keyboard is sticking out through that. You, you have to act, you have to pull out the motherboard, pull out the LAN thing. You know, everything has to, got to come out so that you can access your keyboard. So be very careful with your keyboard. All right, so here you got your screen cable and the power cable. The power cable is actually pretty difficult to remove. Alrighty, and the last one that you need to pull out is the uh, LAN ribbon cable, which is for your Ethernet port and two more um, USB ports. And there you go, now you've got your motherboard out. Alright, so here are the two additional RAM slots I was talking about. Normally by default, they should come preloaded and the top ones should be empty, I'm not sure. And then next to there you've got an M2 slot. And that M2 slot is where your solid state drive is going to go. Alright, so here's the new motherboard. First thing you got to do is plug in the, uh, LAN, the LAN ribbon cable back in. It's really annoying because you have to do it with one hand. Alright, so in goes the uh, 
ram sticks. I'm just going to grab the other one. As always, be careful. I store them in an anti-static bag when I'm not using them. I have them put it to the side. Alright, my apologies. The putting the SSD stick in. I have I'm showing it kind of off screen out of the range of the camera, but I can't really get it around to show you properly. You basically you just slide it in there and then screw it in. That, that that's it. Like the graphics card, it does require a bit of force to push it in there. But yeah, just push hard and it's all good. So yeah, now I'll just unplug the uh, LAN cable again, and I'll show you how everything should look before you put it uh, before you put it together. I've actually edited this out, but I have pulled that motherboard out like I don't know three or four times because I forgot to um, I put it in, and then I forgot to put the RAM in, then I put it back in again, then I forgot to put the SSD in, and yeah, and now again to uh, show you the underside because I showed I didn't show the um, SSD getting put in. Also on the underside of the motherboard you'll find another you should find another copy of your serial number for the motherboard for when you're getting a re getting a replacement. So yeah make sure you reattach your anti-static wristband. Really don't want to fry a brand new motherboard. Especially if it's a under warranty one from Toshiba. If you get a motherboard from Toshiba themselves, you, you should get like a one or two year warranty on it. So yeah, now I'm going to start uh, putting everything back in. Start with the CPU. So to see how the to see what position the CPU goes in, in one corner, there'll be one pin missing on the um, on the port slot thing where you plug the CPU in. And on the CPU itself, also one corner of the CPU will be will, will be missing a pin, so line it up with that. So I pretty much just drop it in there, don't need to apply any pressure or anything. And then yeah, just lock it in, and that's that. Then you got to plug in your um, the monitor display, and there should be the uh, antenna cables will be taped to that as well. Mistake I made later on is that I forgot to properly place the uh, antenna cables where they should go. So yeah, make sure you put the antenna cables in the right places. So yeah, with the graphics card, got to apply quite a bit of force, really push it in there. But yeah, once it's in, it's in. And the screw holes should line up. The uh, graphics card screws are going to be much thinner, or slight size thinner than all the other screws. Otherwise don't, oh, you shouldn't worry too much about confusing different screws. Aside from the graphics card, every single screw in that laptop should fit in every other thread. So if the screws are particularly shorter or longer than other ones, you should sort it based on that, but you don't need to worry about the actual thickness. So yeah, once you got the graphics card and the CPU in, put that fan and the heatsink back in there. You should also reapply a little bit extra heatsink paste, since it's just good practice to do that. And remember, when you are screwing everything in, screw each side in loosely until it's just tight and then once they're all in as far as you can put them in while not applying too much force then apply force on all of them and tighten them up don't just tighten them all up you should have the whole heat sink in in position when you tighten it up just to make sure that it's all flush and perfect and everything otherwise it might jam this is just good practice when you're screwing in like whatever sets of more than three screws all right so as it is now it should be bootable now i just have to put the case on and also put the uh, antennas back in their right place. So yep, just putting all the, uh, the the motherboard screws that go in there. There should be like two or three. Also make sure the, the fan is plugged in. Anything that you've unplugged plugs back in. Watch the uh, speakers and the areas around the speakers, the, the hinges, they might not click back in perfectly. And also make sure your cables are all in the right places. Take note of, if you've removed any tape, take note of where it used to go. A trick that I've found, just with whenever you put any kind of cases on anything, 
when you're opening up anything like I've done this with monitors and stuff just sit the case back on there so that you can when there's uh, multi multiple layers of um, screws put the case on there so you can see what screws need to go in um, before and after you've put the case on because sometimes they'll, they'll they'll share a screw hole okay, so once all the uh, once all the motherboard screws have been put in you can put the uh, make sure you move your uh, cables all out of the way as well but um yeah once everything is where it should be put the case just put the case on you should start with the area underneath the battery where the battery goes that's got to clip in first and then the rest of it yeah just just push down on it slap it whatever it'll 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 it clicks in together pretty easy you don't really need to worry about it not clicking in properly it's just a very very accessible laptop it is designed I'd say it is designed to be opened up and uh, repaired and all that all right so now I've put I've I've missed out on that part, but that I've uh, put the uh, RAM in and also the two hard drives. The uh, hard drives are kept in pretty easy, and they've got the slide. They got the sliding tabs. You've got those two guards on there, so you won't m mix up which uh, hard drive needs to go where. And also, don't forget to put in your um, your BIOS, but your BIOS uh, battery. So yeah, actually, the last thing that you'll want to do is put the battery in instead of putting the um, case together first. Because I didn't put the uh, Wi-Fi antenna cable together properly for this, I'm not going to run it with the battery in there because the battery, yeah, it, it, it's squishing the cable. I have to take this thing, I have to open up the case again later and uh, put it back together, but yeah, so I'm just running it without the battery in there. You don't need to worry about that. So yeah, time for the first run. Powering it up, hoping it works. I, I know it works because this is a post repair um, recording, so yeah. First thing it does is, uh, yeah, it doesn't, uh, it didn't turn on properly. This is just because I have, I had it in CSM boot mode. It also might be because the battery was pulled from the BIOS. So yeah. Once it's in secure boot mode, it will it work it works fine. On your first boot though, you should still open up the BIOS anyway and check that all your hard drives and your RAM and everything are being read properly and are present and accounted for. And you're here, showing you that it's now running up for the first time, and its value has jumped from the three hundred dollars that I paid for it initially to uh, whatever two and a half thousand dollars, whatever the um, Cosmio X70 is worth. At this point in time, though, the the this model has been discontinued by Toshiba uh, because of their I don't know some sort of scandal or something. They lost a bunch of money, maybe copyright infringement, or I don't know. They lost a bunch of money, so now they shut down their laptops production, and yeah, the Cosmio range was like just an abuse of money, really. Not really making too much money on it. It was a high-end machine, uh, unnecessary, really. Like, it's a great thing, but it's like a sports car. So yeah, but a very well-built sports car. Anywho, this pretty much concludes my video. I uh, hope that you found it informative and it helps you to fix your own Toshiba Cosmio, especially now that pretty much all warranties should have expired and there's not really any much coverage for this machine. So yeah, uh, like, share, subscribe, all that, all that jazz. Anyway, thanks, th thanks for watching.